Mighty God, we thank you this morning. We bless your name. We worship you. Be lifted forever, O oh Lord. Accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Lord, we have come to hear from you today. Lord, speak to us. Let the entrance of your word bring illumination to our soul, to our spirit, to our mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that your word will bring blessings to us this morning. And let your name be praised forever. For we pray and we receive in Jesus' name. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Open your Bibles with me to the book of Psalm number 67. Verses 5 to 7. Psalm, 50, uh, Psalm 67. Verses 5 to 7. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield an increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. May God bless the reading of his word. In the mighty name of Jesus. So this morning we are looking at a title called Avest of Praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Avest of Praise. It's our Thanksgiving session for the month of August. Avest of Praise. And I pray that the Lord will speak to us in the mighty name of Jesus. When we talk about Avest, we're talking about the period to gather. Period of gathering. Period of gathering is a time to reap, a time to reap what has been sown. So when there is um, a seed that is sown, a time will come where you want to gather or, you know, reap that that you have sown. And it is my prayer this morning as you sow the seed of your praise, the seed of your worship, the seed of your thanks given to the Most High God, you will reap bountiful harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. And there are three things that you need to know when it comes to harvesting. There are three principles that guides or that governs harvest. And by one of that principle we found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 2, the B part. He said that it's time to plant and that it's time to harvest. So what does that tell us? It tells us that harvest can only come after planting has been done. Harvest precedes, sorry, harvest comes after sowing has happened. So it's a divine order. There is a time to plant and a time to harvest. So if someone has not planted, it will be fraudulent of the person to be expecting a harvest. And I'm sure there are no fraudulent people here today because we have planted and we are still planting. Amen. Is there anybody in the church? We have, we have planted and we are still planting. We are planting our praise this morning and it will return to us bountiful harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. So anyone who has not planted is not permitted to expect a harvest. The second principle that governs harvest is in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. And it tells us that whosoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And anyone that sows bountifully will reap bountifully. And what is that telling us? The size of your harvest is proportional to the size of your seed that you have planted. So you cannot plant in 5% and expect to reap in 100%. So what we're trying to say is that the quality of your seed, the quality of your planting will determine the quality of the harvest that you will have in return. So you cannot be stingy in your seed, in your planting season and expect a bountiful harvest. God is not a magician. Tell your neighbor, God is not a magician. 
I didn't hear that. God is not a magician. Anyone that sows sparingly will reap sparingly, the scripture says. And for every bountiful uh, cedar or sower, they can expect bountiful harvest. So the quality of your seed determines the quality of your harvest. And I pray the Lord will give you the strength to sow the seed of your praise this morning without holding anything back in the mighty name of Jesus. The top principle that governs harvest is that it must come. Harvest does not cease. It does not fail. It doesn't matter how bad the weather looks. There must be something to reap. In the book of Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, the Bible tells us loud and clear. It says, while the earth remains, the seed time and harvest time shall not cease. So as long as you are still on this planet earth, you are not in the moon. You have not gone to the sun or to any other planet. You are on planet earth. You can expect that every seed that you sow will return to you in bountiful harvest. In the mighty name of Jesus. Why is this important for us? Your praise and worship this morning is a seed that God is going to work on to return to you a harvest. So you want to be like me. You want to be wise. You want to be strategic. You don't want to only dance to music. Amen. You don't want to only show off in your dancing. You don't, you don't want to only impress your neighbor or the person seated next to you. You want to give your thanksgiving. You want to give your praise. You want to give your worship as a seed that you want to plant to God and you can be sure God does not owe any man and he will not owe you. God will not owe you. So if, if you were like me this morning, even though you may not have come with that expectation, you can rejig yourself and repackage yourself and be strategic in the presence of God during the Thanksgiving session so that you see your dances, your singing, not as a melody that satisfies your body, but as a seed, as a worship instrument to provoke the intervention of God in your life and your situation. And I pray God will come through for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So you want to see your thanksgiving this money as a spiritual investment. Is a spiritual investment. And everyone that invests should expect a return. And I pray the Lord will come through for you this month. The Lord will come through for you this month. In the mighty name of Jesus. So there are, there are three specific harvests of praise that I want to look into this morning. According to that Psalm 67 verses 5 to 7 that we read. There are three specific harvests of praise. And in the uh, verse number 5, Psalm 67, we saw increase as the first harvest that flows or that follows your praise, that follows your planting. Increase is number one thing that follows. The Bible says in verse 5, Psalm 67, let the people praise you, O God. Let the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield are increase. So for every seed of praise that you sow this morning, you can expect what? Increase. For every seed of praise that you sow this morning, you can expect increase to go. Why? Why am I saying this? Every praise giver, they don't experience scarcity. You know how to praise. It doesn't matter how small that resources looks in your hand. If you can learn how to give thanks, the Lord will multiply it in your hands. My scriptural reference is in the book of John chapter 6, verses 1 to 14. We were told the miracle of uh, the feeding of 5,000. Jesus Christ got five loaves of bread, two fishes. And the Bible says in verse 11, he gave thanks. 
he gave thanks and he distributed the bread, five loaves, two fishes among 5,000 men. And they had 12 baskets in excess. So it doesn't matter what you have in your hand that looks intangible, that looks immaterial, that looks insignificant. All what that is waiting for is your thanksgiving offering to God. What that small thing is waiting for to become big is your heart of gratitude. What that job that you think is not the best job that you want to do is waiting for to get you the job that you deserve is your appreciation to God in that small estate. What that failing business is waiting for is your heart of thanksgiving to God for it to be turned into a successful business. What that marriage that is not working is waiting for to get working is the thanksgiving to the most high God that at least you can find a spouse. So every praise giver, they don't experience scarcity. Scarcity is not in the dictionary. Every praise giver lives in excess. They live in abundance. And I pray the Lord will visit you this morning with his abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. Every time you offer thanks to God, the earth has no choice but to respond to the scripture to give you increase. And the Lord will give you increase. The Lord will give you increase. The Lord will give you increase. In your marriage, you experience increase. In your job, you experience increase. In your finances, increase will flow. In the mighty name of Jesus. The second harvest from that verse 67 for every praise that we give is blessing. Blessings. Blessings. Somebody can be successful and be lacking in blessing. I'm sure you know that. Success is not the same with blessing. If you are not sure, you can go ask Naaman. Naaman in 2 Kings chapter 5. Verse 1, the Bible says, Naaman was a valiant soldier, a great man, well respected by people, but he had leprosy. He was successful, but he was not joyful. So the blessings of God is the favor of God that was best that's bestowed on you for your joy to be full. Are you with me? So when the blessings of God is upon your life, it doesn't matter how the world defines success you will be pleased with that and your joy will be full in that. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is why the scripture says to us in Proverbs 10, 22, it says that the blessings of God makes a man to be rich without adding sorrow. The blessings of God, no trace of sorrow. And how you can attract God's blessings, the quickest way it's not in prayer. Prayer is good. It is in the place of praise and thanksgiving. That's Psalm 67. He said, let the people praise you, O God. Let the people praise you. Then the earth will yield its increase. And the Lord our God will bless us. For everyone who understands the mystery of praise this morning, the Lord will return to you with blessing. You didn't hear me. The Lord will return to you with blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 1 to 15, Scripture documents for us the, the, the practice of Solomon, the king. He was so diligent in giving to God. He was so diligent in worship to God. He was so diligent in praising God. 1,000 pound offering. No precedence for him to learn from. He just understood the mystery of praise and thanksgiving to the Most High God. And God visited him. And God told him, ask me anything. A blank check. Ask me anything. And you know when God comes to a man to say, ask me anything, you can never exhaust the resources of heaven with your request. I'm sure you know. So, when God comes to a man, as he's coming to somebody this morning, 
on the account of your praise, he would ask you, ask me anything. And Solomon was a very decent guy, you know, like you, like me. He was so modest and asked for a few things. And God said, what you have done is more than the things you have asked. God gave him even far more than what he requested for. Shout hallelujah. So the greatest, the fastest way to attract blessing is in the place of worship. Is in the place of thanksgiving. Is in the place of praise. Such as you have this morning. So as you praise to God, as you give your thanks offering to God, as you give your dances to God, it is not just a usual dancing. It's not just another first Sunday of the month. This is important because you are about to harvest your offering. You are about to harvest your thanksgiving to God. And so you don't want to sow sparingly this morning. You don't want to sow sparingly because the quality of your seed determine the quality of your harvest. The Lord will bless you as you, as you give him your best this morning. In the name of Jesus. What again can be a harvest of um, praise? It is victory. 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 Psalm 67, verse 7. The Bible says that, okay, okay let me quote from verse 5 again to give it meaning. Let the people praise you. Let the people praise you, O God. Then the earth will yield its increase. And the Lord our God will bless us. And God, even our God, will bless us. And the earth will fear him. And the earth will do what? The earth will fear the Lord on the account of your praise offering to God. On the account of your thanks given to God. On the account of your blessings to God. The people, the earth, will fear God. And what does that mean? It's talking about your victory. Your victory can be battered on the account of praise. You don't have to have weapons of ammunition or anything you know, that, that, the, that the earthly military rely on to fight war, to win victory. On the account of your praise, you can gain significant victory. You know the story of, I mean, the king in Second Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat. Very well told story. Jehoshaphat facing a multitude of army, over three, four nations, and all he relied on was the praise of the Most High God, and he got victory. So it doesn't matter how long that battle has been and has refused to go on the account of your praise today. Victory is coming in Jesus' name. I said victory is coming in Jesus' name. Every praise giver don't need to worry about the enemy. They don't need to worry about the devil. They don't need to worry about demons. They don't, win, and they don't need to worry about powers and principality. Why? Because you have a weapon of warfare that cannot be defeated. That cannot be understood by the enemy. And yet can deliver great victory to you. That is your praise. That is your praise. No prison gate can hold down a man that knows how to praise God. No prison gate. No chain is too thick and strong enough to tie down a man that knows how to praise God. Go and ask Paul and Silas. Act of Apostles chapter 16. They were chained in the prison. They were chained in the prison. And all they could do was to raise praises to the Almighty. And the Bible says that there was a earthquake. There was a earthquake. As you praise God this morning, I declare earthquake over every chain, over every bondage, over every limitation in the mighty name of Jesus. That is what your, you know, your, your, your praise can do. It can give you victory that you cannot imagine.
everyone that knows how to praise God, they are unstoppable. They are unstoppable. Why? Because the power of your praise has, has, has the potential, has the capacity to excavate every evil foundation. If we read in the scripture that the praise and worship of Paul and Silas caused an earthquake, it means that your praise, your thanksgiving, your worship can get to the foundation of whatever thing that doesn't seem to be working in your life, in my life. That scripture tells us in Acts 16, it says that the, the foundation of that prison shook. So your praise and worship this morning can shake the foundation of whatever thing that does not work in your life. If only you believe. If only you give it as the Lord expects it. And I pray the Lord will come through for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord will come through for you. In the name of Jesus. Look at the first Samuel chapter 16. First Samuel 16 verses 14 to 23. The Bible says that through the instrument of praise of David, the demons that was troubling Saul disappeared. So no demon can exist or can live in the life of everyone that knows how to praise God. And we are talking about demon, we are not talking about horrible objects that you see around. You don't see demon. They are invisible spirits that manifest in diverse ways. Those bad attitudes, those bad behavior, that demonic forces at work. So if you are a praise giver, they can't choose your house and they can't choose your body as, your own habit as their own habitation. If you are a praise giver, no demon is authorized to stay in your body. That is what that first Samuel 16 tells us. That through the instrument of worship of David, the demon in the life of Saul disappeared. How much more you are the praise giver yourself. You can be sure of complete deliverance. So for every praise we give this morning, the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will deliver you. In the mighty name of Jesus, rise to your feet and let's take this prayer. Ask that your praise will flow to God this morning as a stream in the valley. That your praise will flow to the almighty God. If you are ready to praise God like me, pray that your praise will flow to the throne of grace. That your praise will attract the blessings of God. That the Lord will accept you and your praise offering this morning. The Lord will accept you and your praise offering this morning. Pray and talk to God. Pray and talk to God. Pray and talk to God. That your praise will attract the favor of the Most High God. That your praise will provoke the intervention of heaven in your situation, in the condition that does not give you joy. That your praise this morning will attract God's intervention. Is anybody praying to God this morning? Talk to God. Talk to God. That your praise would, would provoke God to visit you as he visited Solomon. And your praise this morning will present to you a divine blank check. Ask me anything. In the mighty name of Jesus, talk to God. This is the Liberty Assembly. Raising a glorious generation.